Thanks for tuning in for another episode of DM's Montreal Beer Review. As promised, today's beer is another American craft beer. Moreover, it's another Imperial style beer. Clock's in at 7.8% uh, ABV with 85 international bittering units. And it's the Gonzo Imperial Porter from um, the Flying Dog Company out of uh, Frederick, Maryland. And it's the first beer both from the state and uh, the brewery I'm having. I got this set uh, again at New Beer Distributors. It was recommended to me by Barry a long time ago, but I only got to buy it a few months ago. Um, what else can I say? Lovely cap, pretty cool um, artwork on the label, which is uh, peculiar because the brewery's beers have been uh, the subject of many debates and people are discussing whether they're appropriate. Some of the labels are really controversial. In this case, it's okay. It just has this you know, skeleton kind of thing. It says, okay, let's party. As far as the style goes, this is a Baltic porter, and it's, again, something I have never had. I'm a fan of regular porters. I like, you know, a roasty, chocolatey uh, character in those beers. But Baltic porters, essentially, um, they're not a new style, you know, unlike other imperial styles uh, that uh, American craft breweries have, you know, come up with. Um, Baltic porters um, date back a few centuries, and uh, they're sort of brewed in Britain in England, whatever, and then they were shipped, some of them were shipped to, uh, through the North Sea, um, sometimes in, into the Baltic Sea. Um, that, that's why they had to brew them stronger and with, you know, more malt and everything. This particular beer is dry hopped with cascades, according to the website. It says here, dark, malty and mysterious, this beer is as complex as the man it celebrates. Brewed to honor the life of Hunter S. Thompson, guns and pearl porters and assault on your taste buds with just the right amount of irreverence thrown in. I'm going to be using my baby snifter for this occasion. So let's crack it open and see what it's all about. It's a pretty cool cab. It says Canis Major, which is the Imperial series of beers, which I'm definitely keeping for my collection, as always. Uh, really roasted smell already, but with a good amount of hops right away, right, uh, right from the start. It's an extremely foamy beer. It's it's very dark brown, bordering on black, with a nice um, brown. I'd say this is a bubbly head. This is not creamy for sure, but it's it's still quite nice in this little snifter. It sort of reminds me of that uh, Stone Sublimely Self Righteous in a way that it blends really uh, strong roastiness with uh, pretty good hop smell as well. Definitely that citrusy uh, cascade, you know, character to it. Bits of chocolate, not so much coffee right now. Not much else going on, but it's it's quite a strong smell, so cheers. It's definitely not too heavy in the mouth feel. It's it's sort of a medium body to it. It sounds like a regular porter with just a bit more um, roastiness and a bit of a smokiness to it as well. Moderate, moderate sweetness, but then you get a really good hop bite to it as well. So that's where the you know the dry hopped character comes out. Bit of a leathery kind of texture to it as well. Not much booziness at all, uh, but this is just the beginning, of course. You know, the bitterness that lingers on is a combination of roastiness and hoppiness. Some nice pine nails. Really good. So, so far, the preliminary grades are going to be. Um, the appearance wasn't. I'm not sure if the, the head's supposed to be that way, but it, it's not. I mean, it's pretty rich, but I'll just give it um, an 8 out of 10. I mean, it looks like a porter. I've had some amazing porters, by the way. Just haven't reviewed them. Eight for smell as well for aroma. No strong chocolate notes. No dark fruit, anything like that. And then for um, the taste, it's it's. I'm gonna give this a definite nine for for now. A mouthfeel, same thing, nine. It's nice. It's it makes itself enhances the drinkability. I can give you the preliminary drinkability grade as well. I'll give this an eight for now. Um, really tasty beer, yeah. So I'll come back, but so far, Guns Imperial Porter, good. It's definitely a good beer. It didn't wow me to the point I'm, you know, I'm going to scream out and yell, "This is amazing! I've got to get more of this." But it's a very, you know, it didn't disappoint me either. Uh, actually, I stand corrected. Apparently, according to you know, beer advocate and rate beer, Baltica number six, which I reviewed in in Russia when I was there which is one of my favorite porters. I thought it was just a regular porter, but it turns out it's a Baltic porter, so 
I guess I've had out of Baltic porters, but this is American twist and American twist on the style, so uh, I have to consider that as well. Now, um, the appearance is still nice. You get some thin head, but you know, it's an imperial style, so I can't really expect much of a head at all, but this is quite good. Um, and it's funny, when you, whenever you get to the bottom of the glass, it becomes clearer that this is not a black bear, but it's just really dark opaque brown. And now when I hold it to light, I can actually see it. Um, as far as the aroma goes, it's still the same, it's still as good, there's still a good hoppiness to it, which is which is nice, you know. As, as much as I like um, Portis, this is something that, you know, enhances the style. As far as the taste goes, I gave this a 9, that's what it's going to get. It's kind of, it's, there's not that many things going on at the same time, but the, you know, the things that are in the beer are really intense, so as far as coffee notes go, I'm getting some, you know, burnt coffee bean kind of thing, as well as some nice bitter chocolate notes, and a fair, just a tad of smokiness as well. As far as the mouthfeel, that's where it's going to, mouthfeel's going to drop to a 7 actually, because uh, as expected, the booziness starts to come through, it's not too much, but this is a very carbonated beer, and even now it's been a while, but it's still it's it's a bit too crisp for me, and maybe uh, I don't think that's very appropriate. Um, but all in all, it's kind of smooth. It's definitely lighter in body than any um, you know any average imperial stout, which is good because some people might find those too thick. And uh, drinkability, I'm giving this an eight for what it is. It's really drinkable. If you're ready for a very roasted beer, some people might have a problem with the bitterness, um, but this is this is drinkable, and I could have a few of these in a row. Actually, it's not like the Dogfish 90. This is more drinkable. All in all, the average is eight out of ten. That's the final grade. So it's a good beer. So eight out of ten for Gonzo Imperial Porter from Flying Dog. I recommend this if you if you're a fan of you know if you're malt head if you're a fan of. Imperial Stout of Porter's, or just if you experiment and you want to try a Baltic Porter, this is a good, this is a good beer. And it wasn't too expensive either, so it's a good combination. That's all I have to say for this episode. Thanks for recommending this to me, Barry. I mean, I didn't love it, but I liked it a lot, so that's good. Um, stick to good beer, guys, and uh, check out my Facebook page, please. Help me get 100 fans so I can get a final, a final get a direct link. In the meantime, see you next time, and check out my other reviews in the meantime. Bye.